thank you very much. Um, that is a very bright light, so I can't quite see you. But um, my role tonight is to give you a, a bit of an understanding of the journey that we've gone through um, in pre-season since my appointment, and then uh, and then to try and outline expectations. But but before I do, it's um, it's moments like these that um, that, that it, I suppose ultimately and really dawns on you about the enormous responsibility that you have. And and whilst my journey has been a reasonably long one, and one that I think puts me in, in reasonable shape to play the role, um, it's just an incredibly exciting opportunity. So, um, and and I don't I only talk for myself. I'm representing all the coaches. We are totally committed to, to making sure that these blokes down the front, the guys that you're going to meet shortly, have every opportunity to be the players that that Nick refers to that, that end up being ultimately as successful as that group. Uh, the pre-season, we, um, we, went to, uh, we went to Colorado. At times it was minus 24. For those that were in here early, there was a fair bit of vision up on the screen. Um, incredibly challenging. I couldn't have wanted, wanted any more, really, to see, to see our players put under the, uh, the pressure that they were asked to. We, we certainly didn't divert from our course. There were times when the conditions were such that it would have been much easier to go inside and try and find an alternative venue, but we wanted those opportunities. We wanted to test the boys both mentally and physically, and to say that they embraced everything we threw at them would be an understatement. Um, and, and for a new coach to, to see a group respond to your challenges and to those of our new uh, conditioning coach, Adam Bowser, was incredibly rewarding. And so from that perspective, uh, we, uh, we go in with real confidence in terms of the shape we're in. If we look at the numbers, and, and it gets mentioned a lot now with sports science, but we're much fitter, uh, some 20% in terms of what's important to us, the high intensity running. We're certainly stronger. Um, and if there's an example, uh, and I won't go into all the specifics because um, Joey will get a bit embarrassed, but if there's an example of, um, of exactly what, um, what Nick's talking about, that, that the roles of our, our more experienced players is to, is to create a culture of what it is we accept, what it is we, we reward, and ultimately, how do we want our young blokes to behave? What, what is important to us? We did a set of hills, or well, the players did a set of hills. There certainly wasn't too much of, of that sort of physical ac activity from the coaches. But um, to say that it was, was gut-busting, once again, would be an understatement. They, uh, they worked incredibly hard in, in really trying conditions. And the plan was that the young guys would, uh, would miss the last couple. Um, such, you know, that was their loading. They don't quite do all that the senior players have done. Um, Joey was struggling physically; he was going okay, but um, but but um, internally things weren't quite working for him. Um, and he just pushed on. He fixed it up later. And the message that sent to the players was this: that when you play for the St Kilda Footy Club, that we work hard and that we do whatever we can to make sure we as individuals are as good as we can be, and as a team, we do whatever we can for the team. And it was an outstanding message, an incredibly positive one. Um, we, were in, uh, we were in snow, and so it was pretty easy to see what had happened, but um, <laughs> Joey's example was fantastic. The expectations um, that I have of the team, once again, this is a, um, I rep represent our, our football department, not just, uh, not, just, not just me, is that we are really, hard team to play footy against, that we get back to the spirit that you guys admired three and four years ago, um, that we've fallen away from. We're not going to hide away from that. I've heard in some of our meetings leaders talk about um, disappointment, embarrassment about the performance of the team. And so not only is it a response to that, but it is the sort of footy that will see us end up ultimately playing in finals uh, and the plan that we have for 2018 and belong and beyond, and I, and I, <laughs> I also agree with uh, with Nick, having been involved with some young teams, that we don't necessarily have to have to follow that plot. Um, that'll be up to us in terms of how hard we work. Uh, we don't put, we won't be putting any limits on the on the group. We don't put uh, a number out there in terms of how many wins and how many losses. But we'll continue to work as hard as we can on our craft and give ourselves every opportunity. We'll also be really committed to playing our role, so our players will have no illusions. You as supporters and, and key stakeholders will understand what the roles are for, for each player that plays. You mightn't have the intimate knowledge that the coaching staff have, but it'll be pretty clear that these guys are predictable to each other and that, that and we'll be held accountable for that. We'll be incredibly com competitive. And whilst it's only a really small sample and, and the scoreboard hasn't looked fondly on us, 
in the in the first three NAB cap, cap games. The the last was much more positive in terms of being consistent. But our focus all pre-season is to be much better defensively, and that we're much more physical. So we've gone from 18th last year in terms of putting pressure on, which uh, would surprise a lot, to ranking in the top three, albeit only NAB Cup, but that's a really positive sign. In terms of physical pressure tackling, once again, we've gone from 17th to number one only in the NAB Cup. Oh, oh, we get that, but that's the, only, that's the only program we can operate in at the moment. So that's a real positive sign and a reflection of the commitment the players are making to, to what we're trying to do. The other thing that's important to note um, uh, is the work that the players have been doing with Justin Peckett, a former player, uh, a much admired player, a player that I suppose in many ways typifies St Kilda in that he um, is not overly flashy but um, got the job done. We all respected the way he played. I played a bit of footy against just Justin and admired um, his performance but he's doing some really good work certainly with the leaders and with the playing group in terms of what they want to stand for. They've been really robust in the feedback that they give each other. They've been incredibly honest, whether that be a, re a review of these NAB Cup games, going through vision in terms of uh, what's expected, what it means to play this for the St Kilda Footy Club. Um, so once again, this is a reflection of, the, um, of their focus from a leadership point of view. And whilst I'm on leaders, um, it's important to note that because of the success that um, that Nick, Nick uh, referred to, the fact that we have been an incredibly successful footy club for a long period of time, the legacy of that is that we, in that period that Nick uh, talks about, we had five uh, first round draft picks, um, the lowest in the competition by a long way, for obvious reason, that is the way the competition sets, is set up. This year, we've had three. So uh, there's a real uh, direction, obviously, uh, this is strategic direction to make sure we rebuild uh, our list and get some, some, some talent in. But the role of the leaders is a really significant one. Um, it is about creating the environment that obviously uh, had a significant influence on some of the leaders that are there today when they were young in 2002. And, uh, and the work that they're doing ha has been tremendous. Some examples. Uh, again, on the weekend, and Lukey Dunstan has, uh, has fitted in really well. He's embraced everything that we've asked of him. You guys as supporters and, and, and fans and sponsors and of the way he plays his footy. Uh, we have our team meeting. Um, he would have gone to the midfield line meeting to talk about Port Adelaide. And then the meeting's over and you see he's over sitting down with Lenny Hayes for about 15 minutes talking about what's important to play in the midfield and what's important to play for St Kilda. Really powerful stuff. Today at a training session when... Uh, and before the session even started, we were talking about our inability to get the ball out of, out of defence from an offensive point of view. And Nick not only has an influence on the coaches in the way that we should structure it up, and then ad addresses the players afterwards with Adam Kingsley about the way we should move the, the ball. And so that is a, a reflection and, and I suppose a, a, to give you an understanding of the, um, of the legacy that these players want to leave. And, and it's, so far it's been real and it's been really significant. Um, just finally, in, in terms of, um, before we get on to the really uh, exciting part of the night and presenting these young blokes with their jumpers, um, we, we go into a game in, in two weeks and in many ways I think this game is going to uh, typify the spirit in which we're going to play. We're going to be a little bit underdone, certainly in terms of experience in the midfield. Um, we'd much rather have Jack Stephen out there, Lou Montagna, Lenny Hayes, absolutely. But there'll be a group of blokes that go out and play. Sounds a little bit like the game that um, Daniel Markworth was referring to. And uh, in terms of talent v talent and the way that the media will describe the, the, uh, the pre-game, they'll certainly call us underdogs, particularly in that part of the ground. And, and, and our guys will get that done. So anyone who plays the role on that particular day in the midfield will be really confident and trust that they'll get that done. And, uh, and that'll be typical of the way that we play and the way that we judge our performance all year. So on behalf of uh, all the coaches and myself, and in many ways the players, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the board, Pete and all the board. I haven't had a lot to do with the board uh, at this stage, but as a coach and as a player, we want the opportunity to do what we love to do. Uh, obviously the players is to play. Uh, coaches is, we'd love to play, we can't anymore. But to, to, 
to be able to give these these young blokes the opportunity to be as good as they can be in the, in the team and the club to be as, as good as um, as it can be. So we really thank you for, for giving us the opportunity to live our dream. Thank you very much. Um, I also have the opportunity to um, to introduce what is going to be a new tradition in our footy club, and that is that we are going forward when, on, on this occasion, we're going to have some of our past champions present jumpers to the, uh, to the, to the current playing list. And it gives me great pleasure to call to the stage Justin Gazicci, Stephen Milne and Jason Blake. Number one, Tom Hickey. Number two, Aaron Sipos. Number three, and it'll probably take a while, Jack Steven. Number four, Clint Jones. Number six, Seb Ross. Number seven, Lenny Hayes. Number eight, Trent Dennis Lane. Number nine, Tommy Lee. Number 10, Daniel Markworth. Number 11, Lee Montagna. Number 12, Nick Rewalt. Number 13, and not with us tonight, uh, Adam Snyder. Number 14, Jaron Geary. Number 16, Jack Nunes. Number 17, Dylan Roberton. Number 19, Sam Gilbert. Wearing 20, David Armitage. 22, Farron Ray. 24, Sean Dempster. 25, Sam Fisher. 26, Tom Curran. 28, Reece Stanley. 29, Jimmy Webster. Number 30, Brody Murdo Murdoch. 31, Tom Simpkin. 32, Terry Malira. 33, The Electrician, James Gwilt. 34, Nathan Wright. 35, Josh Saunders. 37, Bo Meister. 38, Sam Donnell. 39, Cameron Shenton. 41, Darren Minchington. 42, Lewis Pierce. Uh, the next group of players will be uh, being presented with their jumpers for the very first time, so uh, fantastic to have them at our footy club. Number five, Shane Savage. Number 15, Jack Billings. Number 18, Billy Longer. Twenty-one, Luke Delaney. Thirty-six, Luke Dunstan. Forty, Blake Akers. Forty-three, Eli Templeton. Forty-two, 
45, all the way from the US of A, Jason Holmes. <laughs> New Zealand boy, 46, Jason Baker Thomas. <laughs> We've got a, um, the next three guys will be presented with the jumpers that the, that the guys out here, our past champions, wore themselves. So, Spencer White will now change to jumper number 23, obviously worn by Cozzy. Uh, Jason Blake's old number will be now worn by Josh Bruce, number 27. And Maverick Weller will now wear number 43. 44. Sorry, Milne. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the list of 2014. Uh, on, well, finally, on behalf of not only the playing list, the coaches, the footy department, but from the whole footy club, uh, fantastic night. We really appreciate the support. For a, for a reason of supporting an ex-teammate, I had to go to uh, the, the, the Collingwood Footy Club jump presentation. And whilst there might have been more people, there certainly was not the spirit that is in this room. So I, I think we're in for exciting times and you know, we need you as much as we need these guys. So thanks again.